arrived at the library and, um, and quickly became um, one of our family and advocate of the library and just a, a, a good friend. And then when he showed me his photographs and some of his other artwork, it blew my mind. I thought it was just beautiful. And I, I quickly got in touch with Meg <laughs> and showed her his work. And we were happy, very happy to ask him if he would be one of the exhibitors at the library. And so we waited several months for this, and we're really, really glad he's here. And um, looking forward to having um, five beautiful weeks of looking at his artwork anytime we want while we're <laughs> So um, congratulations, Adam. It's beautiful. And thank you for doing this. Thank you, Alex Taylor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My first introduction to making art was using clay to rehabilitate my hand because I have lost surgeries, and they used it to strengthen, and I started using it before I even had fingers. I was born with no fingers at all, kind of make a fist, but what I had, and I used clay to stop that. The Eiffel Tower that's in the case out here, mm -hmm. I is made from clay, because I started with clay. <laughs> and I made it because I just got back from going to Paris. And I went to the Eiffel Tower and I stood under it. I wanted to go out, but the lines were too long. <laughs> Don't go <laughs> honest. <laughs> Don't go honest. <laughs> but I stood under it and I got a little model of it. And I came back and I wanted a bigger model. So I made out of clay, and it took me kind of six hours, but over like a couple weeks, because you have to make it, let it dry, glaze it, file it, then mm -hmm. paint it. And it's a little nice. piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The pot out there, the well is zen. <laughs> Um, is made from clay, and, and it was my first time using a slab roller. I love those things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was meant to be a plano box. So there's a hole at the bottom so water mm. could get out, but it cracked so it can't hold the weight of it anymore. But it still looks cool. <laughs> and the glaze, I never used the glaze before, and it made it that kind of rust, old age, copper thing. Can you tell them real quick about the bronze that you were working with at that time when you did that? I did, that summer I did a week long, oh, two week summer camp, and we did bronze casting. And we did it out of wax and mm -hmm. went to this guy's foundry in Seattle and saw him pour it and oh. did the whole process. So that's kind of what it was supposed to look like. <laughs> <laughs> the photography has been a big part of my life because both my parents are into photography. I grew up looking at photos and stuff. And then our mom used to give us, me and my sister, <laughs> would give us these pointed seat disposable cameras from Costco mm -hmm. by the caseload. <laughs> Six to a pack. <laughs> <laughs> so I started with that for many years. Then once the digital cameras, the pointed seat cameras came out, I got I upgraded to that, and did that for a couple of years, but I kept, I wanted to go more, I wanted to do more with it. So I got my first multiple lens camera some time ago, 
<laughs> it was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, that age. <laughs> and I had, I still have it. And it's a fun little camera, but I wanted to go the extra step. So I upgraded to the Nikon cameras. And Nikon then a big pro because we used to have Nikon film cameras. So it was kind of Nikon family. <laughs> <laughs> the quiet moment. <clears throat> Pixel, um, was taken at Laoby State Park up in Bellingham in 2012. The, when I took the photo, I, it was really windy and the waves were breaking in a lot of waves. And I wanted to do this long exposure, but with, and it was kind of right before sunset, so it was kind of hard to do. So I used this filter on the lens, and I brought it to show people after we done. And it's, it, we call it the black glass, because it's hard to see through. And you can do, that, that photo was a minute and three seconds. And you can't, it's hard to do in the day to get it. So it's that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, we go with this friend who lives in Bellingham, and every time we go out, we would get wet. <laughs> the campus never got wet, but we got wet. <laughs> and this was one of the times I did not get wet. <laughs> I would, but we would go out for, we were playing for two hours, five, eight hours later, we would come home, <laughs> usually wet. <laughs> to trip with our friends and that hot rock was just sitting like that on the beach ready to be taken a picture. <laughs> and we hoping by this summer we go back and see if it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> we, how, big, how big is it? It was a good size. It was probably that big. We didn't grab it because I don't know why we didn't. We, well, we collect save walks. It <laughs> <laughs> we, everywhere we go we get walks. So we have rock gardens at the house and <laughs> in jars and, and stuff. The green stack <coughs> is the one above the case. And that one is just on Lopez. It's a Lopez pixel. <laughs> and it's, we always stack rocks and we decided I really like the green. And we took a picture and it turned out really good. Mm -hmm. And we like the sand on it and a little bit of seaweed. <laughs> the ripples, it's hard to see in the case, but I've been playing around with um, bubbles and ripples in the water. And the, there's a photo on the back wall right behind Charlie though, that a uh, whole bunch of bubbles and that's, I just stood over the water and took it. So I'm playing around with it. I think I need to use a tripod because it's not clear. But I don't know if I can make it clear. Um, still playing around. But it looks cool. <laughs> um, that one is, I grew up next to the park for 10 years. And I explored it, and I was trying to get a good picture of the bridge without any people. It's a very popular mm -hmm. bridge. Mm -hmm. And so the top one is, I was not in the water. I always end up in the water. But that one, I was not <laughs> in the water. I did have to go off the trail to get it, but there was a little deal for it. So it's okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I got the one. Then the bottom one, I climbed down the like, kind of path, and I waited in the water to get <laughs> that shot. And I was not Waited too deep in that one. I was ankle deep. <laughs> <laughs> I have been stone carving for a couple of years, mm -hmm. five years, 
And I, how I started was my mom signed up for a class at, with this art teacher that I've been going for years. But I never thought about doing stone carving. But she got into it, but she already paid for it. So I was like, oh, I could do stone carving. Mm -hmm. So I did it. I loved it. I started with the hand tools, like hammer chisel, and I slowly worked up to the pneumatic power tools, mm -hmm. but she had me, the teacher had me work on the hand tools for yeah. at least two years mm -hmm. till I got really good at them. Because mm -hmm. she's like, if you go to the pneumatic ones, you won't want to do the hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I agree. <laughs> But um, the, so that one does, has been done mostly by hand. I did use a Dremel just to finish it off on the eyes and a little bit on the mouth. But that's my very first completed piece that people want to buy. <laughs> yeah, not for sale. <laughs> the three um, soapstone mm. pieces out there. The, I did those a couple years later in Seattle. And those are so soft, I couldn't use the hammer to those or the pneumatic tools mm. because it's so soft, it like, kind of shadows. So I used, uh, I guess it was a pneumatic Dremel, so it's like a high-powered Dremel. And it's th that soft. That stone is really, really soft. It, you, they say you can cut it with a butter knife. I don't know oh. how oh. easy that would be, <laughs> but oh. I haven't tried. <laughs> oh, that was no. it. That was awesome. <laughs> so thank you for coming. Awesome. Oh. Oh. As a thank you, you know, yeah. one per person or can um, people ask you questions? Yeah, do you guys have any questions? The three soapstone pieces, how did you come about um, discovering those shapes inside the stone? Was it those you know, did it end up falling apart and shaping <coughs> it all as you're creating it and you end up, oh look, this piece is gonna be way different than the song. <laughs> I did have one that did that. <laughs> it shadows because I was like, I was hammering on it, so it kind of disintegrated. Those were um, just leftover pieces from other projects, and they kind of had their shape to it. So I just cleaned them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. so added some. I added some, and I, the big one with the hole in the middle, I dug out the hole mm -hmm. with the pneumatic Dremel. Since you brought brought the tools that you used, where are they? I think they're still they're in the car. They're in my car. <laughs> 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 I'll get those. <laughs> I can bring them in. I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Liz. I was just wondering about the picture, the, the two top pictures back there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all exquisite. What? Where is? What's the story with them? Yeah. So the top picture is um, down here at the. Uh, the Bay. The Bay Cafe, oh. where we used to be. And it was the night where it was thunder and lightning oh. and the sunset. Mm. So that that wasn't edited at all. Wow. I didn't it, make it into a panoramic, so I took photos and kind of cut them and did stuff to it in a program. Uh -huh. And that straight from the camera, wow. it looks really good on a canvas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the bottom one, the middle one, is at the fairy landing, that oh. yellow orange thing. Yeah. And I took it and it was really dark. The photo. And I was like, oh, well, that's not really good. Be good. So <laughs> I did delete it. I don't usually delete stuff. So I think it was a couple months later, I was messing around and it turned out to be that. Wow. And that one is edited a little bit, but not very much. Just the colors pulled out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a piece of a big one. Yeah, it's a piece of a big 
one. Oh, the middle. So I just cut the middle out of it. Oh, a piece of a bigger photo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the of it. Yeah. that one could go, the full size one could go as big as the green stack. If mm -hmm. I'm hoping to do that eventually. <laughs> <laughs> When you have a piece of stone, do you does the stone tell you what it is and you carve from there, or do you have an image in your mind of what you you want to create and you pick a piece of stone for that? It's a good question. I I think both. May, mostly it's whatever the stone is. So like the soapstone though, that was I had no idea what I was going to do and I just did it because I was playing around with the stone, because I never used it before, and it ended up being like that. But like the face, I wanted to do a face, but I didn't know what stone to do to out of, and I finally see like, oh, here's, here's a piece of stone, so I did a face, but that was like my third attempt. The nose kept popping off. <laughs> the nose, I was still learning, so. But, so. That was my first completed <laughs> <laughs> so, Do you buy all your stone or do you find it? Um, I bought some. I get it from friends who are stone carvers, mm -hmm. and they would buy it. Or a couple pieces I did buy. I tried finding my own stone. It didn't turn out so good. I didn't know what I was looking for, so <laughs> I went to the beach. I was like, oh, that looks good. <laughs> Can you tell them, back to the finding the stone uh -huh. or whatever, you, um, with the tiki, yeah, I did what you have, went, because that was a process. I, I wanted to make a, I think it's like an Easter Island head, oh, like yeah. a tiki guy mm -hmm. type thing, mm -hmm. and I wanted to do it, but I didn't have the stone, so we went to Marinacos in, is it Seattle? Or uh, it's, it's east of uh, Bellevue on... Uh, middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be walking no, around. Uh, <laughs> oh, Falls City. By Falls City. Yeah. Way out though. And we're walking around the stone yard, and there was this piece laying back, and it's like, that's it. That's the stone. Uh -huh. I don't have any photos of it. It's just too heavy to bring. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a good 60 pounds of wow. And it sits oh, quite that wow. high up, like mm -hmm. on the ground up. Mm -hmm. It's a big. It's at my house, outside. There will be a drive-by field. Yeah. 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 There you go. Just head it out. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? I, uh, I had worked in soapstone quite a bit, and I used rasps over a lot of it because the hand tools that I have, I've never used pneumatic tools. Mm -hmm. It does, yeah. And you can actually see the, the change as you're trying to go deeper and deeper in this. It's not yeah. And you try to grasp when you're working with stone. A little bit, yeah. yeah. A little, like, files and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So the big ones that you brought, that's what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, so nice. that, that one, those, I don't think I used those. I just used a high-powered Dremel. And you just kind of cut through it. And then to finish them, I did wet. Wet yes. sand people. Yeah. Wet dry sand people. Yeah. A lot of layers. So. Yeah. Those I put a hull wax on it to oh. make them shiny. Because yeah. I was like, oh, I thought when I first did it, I was like, oh, what's the special stone carving wax? And they're like, hull wax. So I was like, what are you? Carnuba. Carnuba. Have you gone back to doing stuff in clay after carving stone? A little bit. I did more potter's wheel mm -hmm. stuff. When we lived in Bellingham, we had a space I went to mm -hmm. and did it. But since we moved here, we had the space of looking for a stone carving place too. Mm -hmm. So might combine the two. I was just thinking it's easier when you lose a nose in clay, you can just put another <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 
glue stone back together, but it doesn't look good. So I opted not to. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that that's where the roots of the stone came from? No. no. Stone carving that was done by a master where there were no parts that were glued on or attached with wax or without wax. See, sear is without wax. It's a sincere truth. There you go. So where where are you currently creating all these masterpieces at? Where the stone have I haven't done it since I got here, so it's been a little over a year. The photography is just kind of level. <laughs> <laughs> the, the clay I haven't done a couple of years now, but we do have a twenty-five pound bag of clay that I could do some heat building out of. <laughs> yeah, dining table. Uh -huh. It's yeah. all table, you know. <laughs> it actually is our table. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of the studio. Not the stone, though, right? Sorry? Not the stone. No. No, I'm not allowed to do that in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I could do the soapstone. I would. Oh, no, I think it's not good to breathe. Soapstone? Exactly. You should probably yeah, soapstone. you probably should wear a mask. He wouldn't really do it in the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too much. Yeah. When I do the pneumatic tools, it's a full like a face mask, goggles, ear protection. Because I use a 80 gallon air compressor, and the thing just constantly runs. So it's, it's loud. I can hear it through the ear protection. <laughs> Did you tell him where you where you do the? Carving and like at Pratt? There's a place in Seattle called Pratt, and they have all set up. So I could go there and do it. It's just expensive to do it mm -hmm. with the just renting the studio time, then the cost of going down. And it's a lot of work. It's usually an overnight. So. <laughs> what are you working on now? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I'm doing. Doing the show, that was the big thing. Um, playing around with panoramic photos, the ones on the back wall. Because they're beautiful. Thank you. So I've been playing around with that. Yeah. Keeping busy. Keeping, yes, yeah, definitely keeping busy. <laughs> so. Okay. so now that you let your studio go, you kind of have to find another place to do. That's yeah, the we rented the water tower by Vortex, uh -huh. and it was an art studio for the other stuff, but the photography I did at home, because mm -hmm. I did like, I like going there, but it was like, I like doing at home, <laughs> in my bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jammies. Yeah, jammies. The photograph of the bubbles, is that the sea? Yeah, that's the wave coming up oh, on okay. the beach. Yeah. Beautiful. And mm -hmm. I, I didn't move some bubbles sure. around because I didn't like the rocks. That's <laughs> 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 All the bubbles were there. That was <laughs> you didn't make the bubbles. I didn't. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. 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 So I have the stone comb tour, so if you guys want to come up and see, or I can. Sure. Can I say something? Yeah. So Alec brought these cards. These are different photographs that he's taken in 